my name is Romana Ali. Hope you all are well. In the last class, we have already discussed about the movement of water, in which uh, we have studied that there are two uh, main uh, methods by which the movement of water takes place. The first one is absorption of water, and the second one is ascent of sap. We have studied about the first step, that is absorption of water, in which uh, we have learned about how the water moves. Uh, from the root hairs till it reaches the xylem vessel. Now the second step is ascent of sap. So in today's class, I'm going to discuss about the step that is ascent of sap. Ascent of sap is nothing but upward movement of water. When the water reaches the xylem vessels through the root hairs, then from the xylem it transports towards the leaves. So this upward movement of the water from the xylem is termed as ascent of sap. So there are many factors by which upward movement of the water takes place. The first factor we are going to learn is root pressure. Uh, in the first step absorption of water, we have discussed that from the soil the water is absorbed by the root hairs and from the root hairs it is going to enter into the cortical cells then to endodermis and finally it reaches to the xylem. This movement of the water from the root hairs till the xylem is a passive transport because there is no energy consumption take place in this process. Hence, it is called as passive transport. By the passive transport, the water from the root hairs reaches the xylem vessels and from the xylem vessels, when it has to transport it to the leaves, a factor that is root pressure has to be created. So, how the root pressure is created? When we observe the plant, we can see that the root has absorbed the water from the soil and this water is going to reach to the xylem vessels of the roots and from the xylem it enters into the stem and then it reaches to the leaves and in the epidermal layer of the leaves uh, we can see some pores or the tiny pores like structures and these pores are called as stomata. Stomata are the structures which helps in the water loss. The water loss through stomata is called as transpiration. So this inward movement of the water and the water loss is continuous. But when this stomata closes during the night time, the transpiration stops. But the inward movement of the water is continuous. So as the water movement is continuous inside the plant body, uh, xylem vessels of the root create some pressure. And this pressure helps the water to move upward. And the pressure which is created by the xylem vessels of the root is called as root pressure. When the root pressure is created due to the absorption of water through root hairs, a column is built in the stem or in the other plant, uh, parts of the plant body. And this channel or a column which is built by the root pressure allows the water to enter the various cells of a plant body. So this is about the uh, root pressure and the root pressure uh, enables to pump or push the water up to a certain height. Therefore, the root pressure helps to carry or to transport the water in herbaceous plants well. Whereas in the big trees or in the tall trees, the root pressure cannot transport or cannot uh, uh, show the upward movement of the water till the tip of the tree. Uh, root pressure only helps to carry the amount to a certain height or to a few centimeters in a plant body. Therefore, it helps in the transportation or in the movement of water only in herbaceous plants. As I said you that the root pressure is uh, sending or transporting the water only uh, to a few centimeters, only by a few centimeters in a plant body. So how it carries the water only for a few centimeters, uh, let's see an activity. Take a potted plant and water it properly and after watering cut the plant just above the ground level the, as we have cut the plant just above the ground level we can see that the water which is present in the soil is absorbed by the root hairs and this water is going to transfer to the xylem vessels of the roots and when the xylem vessels uh, accumulates or absorbs the water from the root hairs then this water is going to move upwards and till this level till this stem part when the water reaches again some pressure is created by the xylem vessels and that is nothing but root pressure 
So, by this root pressure uh, in this portion a column water channel or a water column is built up due to this the water is pushed upwards. When the water is pushed or pumped upwards it is lost in the form of water droplets. So, we can observe some water droplets on the top and these water droplets when accumulates the portion or the top most layer of the stem by this we can see or we can conclude that the root pressure which is created by the xylem helps in carrying the water to a shorter distance or to few centimeters in a plant body. In big trees or in the huge trees the root pressure is not enough to transport the water to the longer distance or till the top of the tree. The another condition in the root pressure is guttation. It is the water loss in the form of liquid through some pores called hydrothodes. When we observe a structure of a rooted plant or a herbaceous plant, we can see that in the margins of the leaves some pores are present which are called as hydrothodes. And guttation is usually occurs during winter season or in the early mornings because the entire night the water which is present in the soil is absorbed by the root hairs and this water creates the root pressure. Because of this root pressure the water moves upward in the plant and as the stomata are not open till the sun rises or it opens in the later period of time so there is no transpiration. The transpiration is not begin. So because of the root pressure created in the xylem vessels the water reaches to the pores called hydrothodes and from that pores it comes out or it releases out in the form of water droplets. So, guttation can be defined as a process in which the water is coming out in the form of liquid through hydrothodes. The second factor which helps in the upward movement of the water is transpiration pull. Root pressure is one of the factor which helps uh, to transport the water up to a certain height. But the transpiration pull is important force which is enough to push or pump the water up to the topmost level of the huge trees. So this is an important force by which the water transport or the upward movement of the water takes place in the topmost or in the big trees too. So transpiration pull depends upon certain principles. That principles we are going to study uh, later but before the principles we are going to discuss about its process. So, transpiration is a process in which the loss of water takes place in the form of water vapor that is in the gaseous state through some pores called stomata. Whereas, in the guttation process we have already studied that it is also a process in which the water loss but the difference is that uh, in guttation the water is coming out in the form of liquid whereas in the transpiration it is coming out or it releases out in the form of water vapor that is in the gaseous form through stomata and in the guttation it is through hydrothodes. So, let us talk about the structure of stomata. When we observe the structure of stomata in dicot plants we can see that there are two guard cells present and the outer layer of the guard cell is thin, the inner layer of the guard cell is thick walled. The inner layer of the guard cell is thick walled because it exerts pressure when the cell becomes turgid. These two guard cells are bean shaped or kidney shaped in the dicot plants and around these guard cells some epidermal cells are present. And these epidermal cells are called as subsidiary cells. When the water enters into the guard cells, the guard cells become swollen and it expands. Due to this expansion or when the guard cells become turgid, uh, these inner thick wall stretches and shows some depression. Due to this depression, the opening is wide and this opening is called as stoma. By the opening of the stoma, the water releases out and the subsidiary cells which are present around the guard cells, it contains some ions and water in it and these ions and water is going to be transported to the guard cells through a process called endosmosis. 
we have already discussed about endosmosis which is the process or a condition in which the water moves into the cell so when the water moves into the cell the guard cells become turgid and the inner wall shows some depression and uh, it shows an open white to move out the water when we observe the structure of monocot plant we can see dumbbell shaped guard cells are present two dumbbell shaped guard cells are present and around which the subsidiary cells are present as in the dicots and here in the monocot plant both the outer wall and the inner wall are thickened and like in the dicots it is also showing a pore or an opening which is called as stoma now let us discuss about the opening and closing of the stomata how the stomata opens to draw the water out and how it closes let's see so in the dicot when in the subsidiary cells as i said you that ions and water is present so the ions like sodium and potassium are present in the subsidiary cells these ions are more concentrated so these ions are absorbed by this guard cells when these ions move to the guard cells the guard cells becomes hypertonic that is more concentrated and the subsidiary cells or the epidermal cells which are present around the guard cells is less concentrated we can say it as hypotonic so we have already studied that water always moves from hypotonic solution to hypertonic solution therefore the water which is present in the subsidiary cells moves towards the hypertonic that is more concentrated one which is present in the guard cell when the water enters into the guard cells the guard cells swells up it expands and it shows some uh, depressions these are the depressions and due to this uh, we can see a wide opening through which the water is released out here we can take an example of balloon when we blow a bean shaped balloon and we blow the air in it we can see a depression like this so likewise when the water enters into the guard cells it is also showing a depression and uh, it uh, widen up the pore and through that pore the water comes out of the stomata in this way the evaporation process occurs which is called as uh, transpiration where the water changes into water vapor and releases out of the stomata now the next is closing of stomata and dicots as in the opening of stomata we have discussed that some ions are moving into the cell it uh, makes the uh, concentration of the guard cells higher then the water from the subsidiary uh, subsidiary cells moves into the guard cells but when the stomata have to close it brings back or it transported back the ions into the subsidiary cells and by transporting back the ions into the subsidiary cells the guard cells become less concentrated that is hypotonic and the subsidiary cells or the epidermal cells becomes hypertonic that is more concentrated due to the accumulation of ions sodium and potassium as the concentration of the subsidiary cells increases the water from the guard cells moves into the epidermal cells or the subsidiary cells and the guard cells becomes flaccid as the guard cells become flaccid it closes the pore the pore is called as stoma it closes the pore and hence the closing of the stomata takes place so in this way the difference in the concentration of subsidiary cells and the guard cells makes the transpiration pull in a plant body the next is opening of stomata in monocot as in the dicot we have seen that how the transport of uh, ions takes place from subsidiary to guard cells likewise in the monocot also the difference in the concentration of subsidiary cells and guard cells makes the cells to open and to widen up the pore to releases out the water vapor and also in the closing of stomata by bringing back or by transporting back the ions into the uh, guard cells so in this way the closing and the uh, opening of the stomata takes place in both monocot plant and in the dicot plant the difference in the monocot and dicot uh, plant stomata is the guard cells of the monocot plant 
is bean shaped or kidney shaped in monogod it is dumbbell shaped and uh, the mechanism of closing and opening of the uh, stomata in both dicot and monocot same among the epidermal cells there is only the guard cells which contain chloroplast in it due to the presence of chloroplast the stomata opens only uh, during the process of photosynthesis that is in the presence of sunlight and it closes during night because of the absence of sunlight so uh, when we see observe the other epidermal cells instead of guard cells we cannot see or we cannot observe the chloroplast so hence the chloroplast present only in the guard cells and therefore the stomata helps in the transpiration and also in the exchange of gases that's all for today and the remaining topics under the chapter transport in plants we are going to discuss in the next class thank you